Hello friends, this video on basic geometrical ideas part 20 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now, like how we had discussed in case of polygons for circle also, we will talk about the interior and exterior parts of a circle. Now, in order to understand the interior and exterior of a circle, uh, let us imagine it in this way. Now, instead of circle, let us imagine a circular field or a circular park which is like full of greenery, grasses, plants, or you see it, it is a park or it is a lawn, which is in the shape of a circle. So how will you tell me which part is the interior of the lawn? Interior means inside of the lawn. Definitely that part which is like enclosed by the lawn, which is enclosed by the circle. So basically this entire greenery is the interior of the lawn. And anything that is located out of it is considered to be the exterior. So let us consider any point. So let us consider these cows which are grazing in this field. So where are they present? Are they present inside the field or outside the field? Obviously they are present inside the field. That is why they are grazing there. So they are present inside the field. That means they are in the interior of the field. Now, whereas there are certain cows which are present outside the field. So that means these are in the exterior of the circle. So these points, so if you have points here, so they are considered to be the exterior points. And if you have certain points here, these are considered to be interior points. Now, in case you have a point which is located exactly on the boundary, then it is said to be on the circle or it is said to be on the boundary of the circle. So that's how we distinguish between interior and exterior of a circle. Circumference of a circle. So now what is circumference of a circle? It, it sounds to be a very big name. Circumference. Difficult to remember also. But the concept is very simple. Circumference is nothing but the boundary of a circle. Now I will tell you why do we need to know the boundary of a circle. You might ask that okay fine boundary of a circle. But why do we need to know the boundary of a circle. What, what will we get out of it. So let me give you this real life scenario. Let us suppose that there is a field which is circular in shape. Now due to a lot of disturbances from outside maybe some notorious people are entering inside the field and destroying the crops or some other animals are coming and grazing in, inside the field and destroying the crops. So in order to protect the field what you decided is you are going to put a boundary on the field some additional boundary maybe with, uh, with uh, wooden platforms or with wires you are going to fence the entire field. So that it will remain protected so that no disturbing element can enter inside the field. So now you want to do this. Now in order to do this you need some material you need wires in order to you know bring do make that boundary. Now when you ask somebody to build that boundary for you that person would need some material to build the boundary either bricks or wires or or wood, something, some material would be needed. Now, how will that person know that how much material is needed? Because that person needs to know that what is the length of the boundary that needs to be done. So how do you know the length of the boundary? Only when you measure the length of this entire boundary and the length of this entire boundary is what we call as circumference. So circumference is the length of the boundary of the circle. Now a smaller circle like this, if you have a small field like this, then the length is also small, it is only this much. When you have a big field like this, the length is also big, therefore the circumference is bigger. So a smaller circle will have a smaller circumference, a bigger circle will have a bigger circumference. So circumference has a very important practical application and that is why we have introduced a special term for circumference. Now as you go to your higher classes you will also learn how exactly to measure the circumference of a circle because in this entire lesson we are just introducing you to the basics of geometry. We are just introducing you to the terms so that you understand what is circumference, what is a circle, what is the center. So you are aware of all these terms so that in your higher classes when you actually learn how to calculate circumference, how to calculate area, that times your basics will be clear and you will be able to get more knowledge. So this is about circumference. So we will now learn about sector of a circle. 
What is sector? Now, in, in simple English, what do you understand by sector? Have you ever observed the term sector being used in a lot of postal addresses where we say sector 23 of Gurgaon or where we say sector 105 of Rohini? So, what does that sector mean? That means that there was a big area named maybe Gurgaon and we have divided that into small areas and we call each area as a sector and we have numbered them like sector 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So sectors are basically portions of a bigger region. So here also in a circle, sector is basically a portion of a circle. So you can very easily remember sector of a circle as a slice of your pizza. That's the best way to remember what a sector is. You do not need to remember the definition. You do not need to remember any concept. Just remember sector is nothing but a slice of a pizza. How? Let's have a look at it. What do you see on the screen? You see a pizza with one slice being cut. That you have eaten that one slice of pizza. So what was that one slice? Had this pizza been intact before you ate that one slice, you had a complete pizza. Right? So this one slice, what is it made up of? It is made up of one arc and two radii. This is the radius of the circle, right? Because this is the center of your circle. So two radii and one arc makes a sector. So this slice of pizza which you ate, that is nothing but, that is called a sector of a circle. So sector is the area enclosed by an arc and a pair of radii. You can see it very distinctly here. Two radii, that is a pair of radii and a, an arc. This is an arc because portion of a circle is called arc. So this is basically a sector of a circle. Now it is, you can divide a circle into as many sectors as you want. For example, you have this circle. If this is your center, so this portion is the sector of a circle. Similarly, if I want to divide it into another sector, but this is a smaller sector, that is perfectly fine. Sector is all about, it has to be surrounded by two radii and one arc. That's it. That's a sector. So this is called sector of a circle. Now you might ask, why do we need to know about sector? That is also important because many a times we come across real life problems where we need to calculate the portion of a particular field. Let's say that the same circular field which I was uh, considering in the previous concepts, let's say the same circular field is getting divided into different portions. Right? It, it is getting divided amongst six people. Like how a pizza get divi gets divided into five people. In a similar way, let's say that the field is also getting divided into five portions and everybody wants some portion of the central part and some portion of the faraway part. So that's how everybody wants. It's their wish. So you need to actually calculate the area of each sector so that you are able to divide the field accordingly. So in a lot of real life problems, you actually need to calculate the sector area of sector and that is why we need to know what is sector of a circle. Now the last terminology is segment of a circle. So we understood sector. Now what is segment? Let's see. Segment is basically the area that is enclosed by an arc and a chord. Now we already saw that chord is, now again, let's take the same example. Let's say the same field is now getting divided into five people, but this time they do not want it like different sectors. They just want it to get divided into five parts. So how would you divide that field? So if this is the field, you just divide it into five parts like this, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. So that's how you divide it, okay? Now in this case, what is this? So this last portion that you encounter, that is basically a segment where you have one chord and one arc. So instead of the two radii, in this case, you just have one chord because whenever you draw a chord in a circle, you basically divide the circle into two parts because a chord is going to join two points on the circle. But the moment you draw a chord, you think of any circle, you draw a chord from here to here, you divide it into two parts. This is one part, this is one part. You draw a chord here, you divide it into two parts. One part, two part. So any chord will divide the circle into two parts and each part of the circle will be called a segment. So segment is that area which is enclosed by an arc and a chord. So please do not get confused with sector and segment. So the simplest way to remember is sector means 
sector 22 of gurgaon and sector also means the slice of the pizza so that's how you can remember sector very easily thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you